So today we're going to talk about the diseases in the secondary hemostasis. I divided it into two parts. There is the deficiency diseases, which means you don't have enough or something's going on that's not right on your factors. And thrombosis, which is you're producing too much clotting. So you have okay amount of uh, factors, but you couldn't stop it from happening what is going on okay so we're, we're gonna go start on the deficiency side first so the most common one hemophilia a factor 8 deficiency a8 a8 okay it happens in male because it's sex linked recessive and remember that because the one for factor 9, which is hemophilia B, is also sex-linked recessive. So this disease shows up in males almost always most of the time, okay? Hemophilia C, however, is not sex-linked. So it can show up in girls and boys. And the factor that's responsible for it is factor 11. It is a more commonly found in Ashkenazi Jews. And that's the, um, I think, the main thing would pick up in an exam question if it says Ashkenazi Jews hemophilia C okay that makes it a lot easier but if it's like sex linked you can choose between eight and nine depending on the clues <laughs> that they're gonna give you okay and another word for factor nine is Christmas factor so hemophilia B is like Christmas disease so we have a interesting one here too which is factor 13 factor 13 is the fibrin stabilizing factor okay so it's not um it's not what do you call it? it's not part of the cascade per se see it's not there but i place it up right here because at this point where you're already producing fibrin it helps it get stabilized you know like it doesn't it's not involved in producing fibrin but it's involved in making sure it doesn't come off me okay so it's basically like cement it it stabilizes it like make sure that it doesn't go anywhere so the thing with this is that every result you'll get which is from PT PTT bleeding time all of the results are gonna turn out normal because you're producing the right amount you're not deficient in, of anything but it's just that it's not stable you know it can come off so you can bleed again so the only test for factor 13 is the 5m urea test and remember this because it's an odd one if they say oh pt normal ptt normal bleeding time is normal what is wrong it's most likely factor 13 and the test used for it is the 5M urea test. They say everything's normal, but the 5M urea test is not, it's abnormal. So it's basically that, okay? It confirms that it's factor 13. Von Willebrand factors disease. This is very complicated. There's a lot of tears to this disease, but basically it has, um, it is involved in platelet adhesion because Von Willebrand factor, um, it functions to make sure that your platelets like are attached to each other during the clotting process okay it makes sure that it's sticking to where it should be sticking um, also it is responsible for carrying around factor eight so if you have a problem with von willebrand factor your factor eight will have a problem too because it's not going to be able to go around effectively because there's nothing protecting it it seems like the way I read it, von Willebrand factors like carry carry factor eight with them and make sure that they're effective. So without von Willebrand factor, you're gonna have a factor eight problem. So you're gonna have an elevated PTT as okay. well. And that's it. I think that's it for that. Uh, thrombosis. Now we're gonna move on to too much clotting. So some people just have blood flow problems, so they get like huge clots because um, they're not moving too much. So you get deep vein thrombosis and then you also can have this issue if you're not producing enough antithrombin so um, antithrombin is 
um, something that dissolves your thrombin. Two factor two is also known as thrombin. So if you don't have something that can stop the production of factor two, you will have problems. You will have clotting problems. There's going to be too much of it, and you know it's going to be a problem. It's going to be thrombosis. So you don't want that. Heparin, we actually produce it in our body, activates AT and makes sure that, you know, thrombin gets controlled, the amount of thrombin in your body gets controlled. So heparin helps people to not coagulate. It's an anticoagulant drug that is helpful for people that clots too much, okay? Like for old people, they, they give this, this is the heparin therapy. And so, last but not the least, we have protein C resistance. How does this happen? So protein C resistance, what is protein C anyway? Protein C functions with protein S to deactivate factor 5A and factor 8A. But unfortunately, with um, protein C resistance, also known as factor 5 Leiden, there is a mutation in your factor 5. Okay, so that mutation makes it that factor 5 now is immune to the activation of protein C. So it doesn't care for it anymore. Like, I'm just immune to you. I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to be activated forever. So there's too much factor 5A, and then you have a problem. You have too much clotting going on. And also, protein C and S are vitamin K dependent, so they do get affected by warfarin. And that's it. We're done. We finally finished the whole coagulation cascade and its problems. So hopefully this video helps you review for the ASCP and hopefully I gave some enough hints that of where and how to study for this. Um, I will post this up on my website. I will post this study guide. It's very short. It's very concise. And let's be honest, the ASCP is very long. There's a lot of topics that it can cover chemistry micro hematology go it's one tiny bit of that and i hope that this guide will help you and if um, you want me to make a platelet video i will try to do that too just leave a comment and thank you for watching and good luck